All right, people, it's time to turn up the heat. I have never done wood burning before, but the kit I got comes with all these different tips. So I think in order to dabble before we dive, I should give these a proper little go individually. See what feels good. Make my favorites list, tuck them aside, and start making a plan for some cool artworks we can make. Starting off with the pointy ones, there are a couple of pointy ones. I figured that all work pretty much the same. I mean, look, what's there to say about it? It's a, it's a pointy tip. It burns. Next, I'm gonna call this the angled chisel tip. There are two widths of this in the pack that I got and it's really satisfying. I can do angled gradients with a sharp edge and a softer fading out of the burning on the other end. I can get really strong, sharp lines because the way I can drag through with the length of the line, it sort of keeps burning all the way along where the, the pointy tip was a little more forced. This was much more elegant. Slightly harder to control, but uh, much nicer results. Then we have, I guess we'll call it the flat chisel and ah, uh, it's just so good. It just makes me want to do calligraphy. I swear to God, that's what this is for because I just want to do it. I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to do some calligraphy. Let's do it. Next one I'm going to call, I don't know, the a flat iron, the bent pointy end. I, I have no idea, but think this one feels better for like softer work, slightly shading or more stylized lines. Definitely much harder to control, but it's interesting. I like it. And the next two were pretty glorious. Really simple one was a really short one with quite a thin nozzle, I guess you could say, with a rounded end, which just made for really straightforward line work. Much more controllable and predictable and satisfying to work with than the pointy ones, which tend to gouge into the wood a bit. And then we have pretty much the same idea, but this one is just thick as the barrel all the way along and rounded at the top. This has got to be my favorite so far. Really good for line weight variation. I can get some really interesting patterns and flows, really thick, and I tend to like being heavy handed, so that one works for me. Overall, I reckon this one and the last one are probably going to be the most useful for doing line work. Then I have all these weird stamp things, and they... Uh, they were weird stamp things. I don't know what to say about these. It feels a bit like redundant, like including those stupid like pattern stamp tip kitty markers. But they do have two that were lined that I think maybe could be useful for some effects if you pull it and drag it, but you know, a bit hard to control. What's also interesting is I can actually use the pen itself, like with nothing in the barrel. I can make some pretty cool round donutty stamps and really dark filled in areas just by simply using the heat of the end of the nozzle. Surprisingly good. And uh, I actually think it's gonna come in quite useful. So now I've actually just got a selection of some basic tips and two stamps that I think I could do some really cool stuff with. But I'm still learning how this works and I want to do calligraphy because that was really fun to do with that chisel. So let's do a little bit of that. What word deserves to be burned? Like, what's gonna look cool? Like, <gasps> sunder. What's that? I'll tell you about it later. Now, I don't know how much people do calligraphy with this sort of thing. I reckon it could work well, but it is pretty tricky to control, especially because honestly doing nice calligraphy usually works best when the pen you're drawing with is a bit more flowing and fluid. In this case, it catches quite a bit. So maybe I just have a bit of practice to do to, to get a really good flow with it. It ended up looking really cool, but it was quite hard to control it to look as crisp and even in the burns as possible. And with the word done, I was feeling really good about this and I thought I'd take a little further, switch some nibs and go on to some little flowy flourishes. Moving first through that big rounded tip and then finally the small one. I've got an idea. The fans going so I have to talk louder. It's a little crazy, but it just might work. That looks pretty cool. Wood stain. I'm not done yet. I was looking for a wood stain, but I think this will do. Yeah, that'll do it. God, why is it so fun? That 
That's really cool. I'm really happy with that. And the other thing is, honestly, using the butane torch to help like gradient and color is gonna be really useful. Hard to control, but I think, honestly, uh, this is gonna be a fun one. So if this is my dabble, it's time to dive. I'm gonna do two pieces in this video. One, using a piece of old actual wood cut out from Jeremy, thanks Jeremy. I don't know if this is gonna be a lot harder to work with though, because it's a probably a hardwood. It's, it's probably gonna be a little more finicky. So there'll be a doubling element to that because I don't know how it's gonna work, but we're gonna make an artwork for it. And last but not least, I'm gonna do a real showpiece on this. Utilizing all of the techniques that I figure out as I muck around so far, and taking it even further, maybe with some color and special effects. Ooh. I don't know what special effects means, but we'll fit, we'll do something. So I put a sketch down to try and jump into a piece and in deciding what to do, it was pretty tricky to be honest, because there's a lot of texture on this piece of wood. Really strong lines for the, the rings around the tree and a lot of different sort of gouges and breaks for you know where the, the tree split or dried out. So I tried to work with this to my advantage by making the, the circular ring maybe something that was casting an emanating pulse. We'll get more into maybe what the story behind this is later. But with my sketch down, it's time to jump into doing some basic line work, the surrounding of the outside of this piece. And I kept it pretty basic. It was pretty hard to work with and quite slow. I tried a few different tips because honestly, with the hard wood being much harder to burn than the soft wood that I dabbled with, it was taking a lot longer and being pretty frustrating. In the end, the one that worked the best was the angled chisel because I could drag in the direction of the sharp point of the chisel and get lines down a bit more quicker and more cleanly, but it was hard to control, sort of like, ice skates had that same sort of effect of having a straight little section that I want to draw curved or finessed lines with. I put a little bit of basic shading down, but uh, I had a feeling that I was going to have to use a bit of a cheat option to get more shading down and quicker. And I had something in mind that you may have seen me use already. It's not going darker. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. It's worked and it hasn't. I mean, it, okay, it's really accentuated wood grains and markings. Brings out a lot more of the naturalness of the wood, but it makes the image harder to see and it's a little more coarse. However, this is like my middle step. So I'm gonna go back to my wood burner and add more definition, more really dark shading and try and see if I can add a lot more sort of clarity to the image overall. And the story of this character, at least for my little dabble here, is that he is part of a fraternity of thieves and murderers that live in the Watchwood Forest. A very large forest feared by the locals. In fact, feared by all in the kingdom because the Watchers, the people that live and function in the Watchwood, are known to steal without remorse and take both valuables and lives in whatever way they see fit. You see, Watchers are governed by the ownership of these tokens, these coins that are then branded onto their skin. Every Watcher has a brand and every brand has a corresponding token. The owner of the token owns the Watcher. So when people join the fraternity of the Watchers, they are owned from the beginning. But if one is loyal or cunning or devious enough, they can steal or earn their token back. And when a Watcher owns themselves, or even more terrifyingly, when a Watcher owns many other Watchers, they have the power to take and to kill, to plot, to usurp, and to control much of the kingdom if they desire. And it feels pretty fitting, even that the Watchers live in the mysterious Watchwood, and this piece of wood maybe was carved out and burned from the Watchers themselves as a sign, as a warning to those who dare tread into the Watchwood Forest. And here it is, slightly ruined from the last shot you saw. I mean, it could it could be considered an effect, but uh, I, did, I did like the effect I had before the varnish. So I'm gonna try and use this refined linseed oil to see if that can soak into the wood and even it out. No idea, I've never done this before. This might have also just made it all pretty flat. Maybe it was better before. I don't know. But what I do know is I'm not gonna finish off on this one. I have a redemption arc to pursue. And for my final piece, I shall create an artwork depicting something else from my Sunday universe, specifically Iron Spire, which is season one 
of the world that we're role playing in over on Tabletop Time. For those of you who don't know, it's basically an improvised role play campaign. It's like an audio book. So go check it out. We're having a blast and our season finale is next week as I recorded this video. It feels fitting because episode one is called The King of Flames and this whole story takes place after a, an event that happens in episode one. And I'm working with fire today, so it just felt, it just worked. A lot of the Watchers story that I read out was from my World Anvil page. And this is actually really worth checking out. If you get into the story, which I mean, I've worked really hard on. And this webpage is a testament to that because you can go check out all of the maps, all of the timelines of the entire continent. And it's made the whole world of Iron Spire and running that campaign possible because all of my secrets and all of my breadcrumbs and plans and all the plot twists and everything that's been really interconnected and pretty tricky to keep a hold of in my head normally is made way simpler because of World Anvil's features. Both on the back end as a world builder where I can put all this stuff together and make the experience crafted for my players and on the front end as players and viewers for people who want to check out the worlds that you build or play in them. Now they're not sponsoring this video. I know I'm sounding like it's a sponsored video but they have sponsored the whole campaign of Iron Spy which made it possible and I'm so grateful. It's just just been so much fun and I really want to encourage you guys to check it out. And you can get 40% off of all of their year-long memberships, which is actually their highest level of discount by going to worldanvil.com slash ironspire. I thought it'd be fitting for my final piece created with flame and fire to depict the King of Flames himself, or at least the King of Flames as some people fear him, or maybe as he sees himself. The King of Flames or King Rendrick III of Ironspire has very recently acquired some exceptional powers. The ability to control flame, and apparently to the degree to which he can, upon his command, incinerate an entire city. This, as you will imagine, has a lot of people talking fearfully about what he might do. What is he capable of? What is this magic that he has? And also that he seeks. For it is the king's decree that anyone who has magic is as a result an asset of the kingdom for him to control. It's interesting how much the wood changes when you burn it with the torch. Like obviously this kind of wood in particular, all the lines of the grains uh, really pop out. So it almost looks like clouds behind the flames have a texture. It's cool, it's a happy accident, but it also looks a little mishmashy and it also looks a little flat. And I wanna bring it out with a little bit of a, a wash over the top. I think to have a little bit more uh, control and color in this one, I'm gonna use gouache, but I'm gonna water it down quite a lot so I can get a hopefully really subtle wash of color through the whole thing. And I wanna make this pop. If anything's gonna be strong, it's gonna be the fire and then everything else will just be to sort of contextualize that. <sighs> Let's take this one home, shall we? So moving on to a little bit of color, I want it to be pretty subtle with this one. Now obviously I've learned from some previous attempts that uh, subtlety is gonna be a lot better in the long run than going a bit too heavy handed, but I wanted color in this piece. So in using gouache, I really watered down the colors. Like, significantly watered down, but I really wanted to give this whole thing a wash of color to make it pop. The thing I'm loving about this piece so far is it's like unintentionally, but kind of perfectly, this sort of savior image. It's like the king sees himself as using his power to free the lands and, and as the, the god king of this land. It's so self-righteous and self-aggrandizing. I love it. And I think it's how a lot of his subjects would see or fear him and certainly how he sees himself. The 
great thing about gouache is while I've watered it down so far to keep it really, really subtle, I can water it down less in some areas to make sure I can keep a bit of punch. Specifically the glow I have coming from behind this savior figure. A more opaque white and fairly rapidly washing that back into that more translucent yellow to create a really epic glow. And then last but not least, finishing with a solid opaque white in the eyes, bursting with power from the king of flames. We have gone from burning to burning with a little more experimentation. We learned from it, that's the most important thing because then we went to this. And this is one of the coolest things I've made in a very long time. Well, okay, that's not true because I love all the stuff I make. I made this recently. I also made that. Oh, do you remember the time I made that one? Like two weeks ago? And then that one a week before that. I make some pretty cool stuff, so you should subscribe. But this isn't the only place I make cool stuff because uh, if, you're, if you're tempted to learn a little bit more about the King of Flames and who he really is, go check out the roleplay over on Tabletop Time Roleplay. But for now, that is the end of this video. I'm super proud of it. I hope you liked it. If you did like the with a like symbol, it looks like this. In the meantime, I'm gonna give you one of these and I'll see you later.